Hi, my name is Dr. Allison Gross. I'm the hospital director here at Union Veterinary Clinic, and today we're going to talk about giving insulin to cats and dogs. So I want to mention a couple important things about insulin in diabetic patients. Insulin is one of those medications that does have to be given on a pretty strict schedule every 12 hours after a meal. So if you feel like your pet hasn't eaten a full meal, rather than just guessing or deciding how much insulin to give, contact your veterinarian or even an emergency veterinary clinic if it's after hours to get advice on how much, if any, insulin to give. Um, along those lines, if you're traveling or aren't gonna be able to take care of your um, patient, your cat or dog for the insulin dose, make sure you have someone that can come give it or bring them to the veterinary clinic to board so they can be given. It's really important that they don't miss doses. Diabetic animals, um, the monitoring of them at home is a little more important. If they miss a meal, it's a little more of a big deal than if they're not on insulin because not only are they not gonna get their insulin dose, but that could indicate that there's a, another problem going on and they need to go into the veterinarian. So if they're not eating, if they're vomiting, if they're not feeling well, we need to take that a little more seriously in our diabetic patients. For most patients, insulin administration with diabetes is a lifelong condition. Cats can sometimes go into remission when they are given glargine, which is why we have that as our first choice for cats with diabetes. It doesn't always happen. There's no way to predict if it's gonna happen, but some cats are lucky enough to go into remission, especially if they can lose some weight and then they don't need insulin anymore. The type of syringe you're going to use with your insulin is called an insulin syringe. It's going to come in two different sizes, either U100 or U40. So you're going to want to make sure you have the correct size syringe that matches your insulin. The syringes are going to come perhaps wrapped in a plastic sleeve or like this with a plastic cap over the plunger and over the tip of the needle. If they come like this, you just take the cap off and then you're ready to get started. There's a lot of different kinds of insulins. I have a few here today. There's humulin insulins, which we don't use very much anymore. Um, there's glargine, um, also known as the trade name Lantus, which we use a lot, particularly for cats. And then there's something called prosine. There are other insulins. I'm not gonna go through all of them today. Your insulins should stay in the refrigerator. They do uh, last for six months if you keep them in the refrigerator, despite the um, expiration date of 28 days that you might see on the bottle. Along those lines, if you leave it out overnight, as long as it's not in a very hot room, it should be okay if it's less than 12 hours to still use it and put it back in the refrigerator and keep it for that full six months. Now, with the exception of glargine, insulin does need to be mixed in a pretty specific way. There's gonna be a precipitate at the bottom of your insulin bottle. You may not even notice it at first. Um, so if you're using one of the humulin insulins or prozinc or like I said, anything but the glargine, you're going to need to mix it before you use it. Now you don't want to shake it real vigorously because it won't mix well into the solution that way. The first thing you're going to want to do is just roll it in between your hands a few times like that and then take the bottle and invert it two or three times. And that should mix, mix it well enough so you're getting the correct amount of insulin um, in the solution. Now, when you're ready to draw up the amount of insulin you're giving, you're going to get your insulin syringe, um, take the cap off the needle, and the insulin is going to be prescribed in units, and each little line on the syringe is a unit. Units are pretty small, and it's a little hard to measure out half units, so most likely you'll be getting a whole number um, and measuring that out when you're drawing out your insulin. So you can invert the bottle, you're going to insert your needle right into the bottle, and then just draw out the number of units that you need to give. If you draw out too much, go ahead and squirt the excess back in. If you have an air bubble, you can flick the syringe a few times to get the air bubble out and squirt that back in. Once you have your correct amount of insulin, just take it out, put the bottle down. I don't advise recapping syringes because I don't want anyone to get poked, but if you're not ready to give it immediately, you can just lay it down and gently place it in the cap of your syringe. All right, now I'm going to get our volunteer to show you how to give the injection. So when you're giving the insulin, you want to make sure first that they've eaten their full meal. And as far as location, you can go between the shoulder blades. It might be a little better to go further down right over the shoulder. There's more blood vessels there, so the insulin can get absorbed a little bit better that way. Wherever you give it, you want to pick up the skin. We call that tenting because you want to go right in that nice sub Q area that cats and dogs have. So once you're ready, go ahead and take the cap off your needle. You can pick up the skin, give them the insert the needle under the skin and then push the plunger to give them their dose of insulin. Take the needle out and put it directly into your sharps container. 
I didn't talk earlier about it, but I want to stress the importance of having a sharps container. Don't want anyone to recap needles and get poked, and these are medical waste, so they need to be disposed of properly. You can get a sharps container from your veterinarian, or you can purchase it from a pharmacy. Once it's full, bring it back to your veterinary office, and we'll dispose of it with our medical waste for you. So that's the basics on how to give insulin to your cat or your dog. Um, good luck. It's not nearly as hard as it looks, and you can always call us if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.